ladies and gentlemen of SeemsGoodMagic.com. This is Travis Simulants Hours and Dutch. And we are here to bring you a Legacy Cube Swiss Draft. Mono Red seems to be the way to go if you want to win the most of these. Um, there's a lot of people just jamming Mono Red over and over and over. That's often been the case in Legacy Cube. I'm not sure if there were changes that made it better or if everybody's just fighting over the other stuff, but uh, Mono Red has been very strong. I've also done well with some white decks, but I've had like a string of two ones lately. Like every draft I get into is a two one, which is uh, kind of funny. Have also been streaming a good bit of Eternal on the stream, um, although with Aether Revolt coming out soon, I'm very excited to dive into Aether Revolt. So that, that, that's what's new with me. What's new in your world? Well, we've got a couple different things here. Let's talk about them. So, first off, there is a cat, which we're not taking. If we wanted to do, like, Force Mono White, the Mirroring Crusader's quite good. I, I think I'm probably going to take Ashiok. Although I wouldn't even hate you if you took the Tundra. I'm, I might be supposed to just take the Tundra. It's fetchable. It gives me a lot of options. Most decks are going to be interested in it. Like, Ashiok is good as a finisher in, like, a control versus control mirror. It, it's one of those where if you can protect Ashiok, it can just win the game for you. All on its own. If you can't, it doesn't really do much. I, I think fetchable duel may, may be too much for me. Yeah, there's not even, like, a good mono red card or mono white card. There's some okay ones. And it, like this doesn't lock us into anything. It's a nice safe pick. We get to play it almost no matter what we do. <laughs> now, if you want to talk about a fun card, uh, what are the chances I could make Reanimator work? There's there's really nothing for any other archetype. Like okay, there, there is something for another archetype. There's Hero of Bladehold. I like Hero of Bladehold. I like Hero of Bladehold a lot. Um, if you can get to four mana and have the board clear, this will win the game. It's a card that can win the game on its own. There are not many other cards that can be said about. Gristlebrand is kind of you build your deck around it, and then if you don't draw it, it's not going to work. But, I mean, y'all ain't watching Legacy Cube videos to see me do boring stuff, are you? Maybe there's somebody who's like, take the aggressive card, Travis. Take it. Yeah, I want to win the Legacy Cube. There you go. I would like to do well in this event and win it. And I think having a Hero of Blade hold in my deck is going to lead to more wins than trying to go for goofy Gristlebrand shenanigans. This pack has some other interesting cards. Had we gone with the Gristlebrand Pack Rat as a consideration, I've had some fun things with like a Mimic Vat and a Phyrexian Rager, but I think I'm just going to take the Metamorph here. It's a three mana clone. It, it's not blue. It looks like it's blue, but it's not blue. And it, it kind of just goes in any deck, and we're going to be happy that we have it. I like Flame Tongue Kavu as well. It's a strong card. So, what's going on here? There's a Control Magic, which I'm a little surprised to see. That's a very strong card. Uh, shout out to Miscalculation. That's a good card, too. There's also a Mana Elf. I do like Mana Elves. And Anissa, like Green White Fair, is a deck that I'll play quite a bit, too. Um, not usually as interested in the uh, non fetchable lands, but I'll take a Control Magic. That's a, a little bit of a signal that somebody doesn't want to play blue, I guess. And I'm, I'm down to play blue. I usually think of Hero of Bladehold as like an aggressive card, but it, it can just be a, a mid-range finisher in your control deck. Uh, Seagate Oracle's just fine, too. I'd, I'd like to pick up some more interaction. Like, Condemn can sort of do that. Here's another fetch, which is neat. It could open us up to Bant. But I feel like blue is open. I, I don't know about white. But uh, Seagate Oracle's just a, a fine body that replaces itself. It's kind of hard to go wrong with that. Okay, we've got Precinct Captain. If I want to continue to push on the aggressive white strategy, 
It also makes tokens, which is like potentially need interaction, but there's also a banishing light. And it looks like I'm probably building more towards something that's controlling. Also, double white on turn two may be an issue if, if we're going to definitely play control magic and see gate oracle, and we probably are. So I'll, I'll take the banishing light. That means we're going to be interested in uh, things like Legacies of Lore that we can play on turn two and have something going for them later. Eternal Witness is also a card I like quite a bit. We don't even necessarily have to be white, um, but having a Tundra, the Hero, and the Banishing Light means we can probably go into a blue-white, I hesitate to say control, but control-ish deck. We have absolutely nothing for this to interact with so far, but that doesn't mean we won't find something. Um, it, it can be a powerhouse late game. Uh, also, a 2-2 lifelink is fine against like a burn deck. Like I'd main deck a revoker. I don't think we're interested in the freed. We could go way out on a limb and take the mystic snake, but I, I think this is just interesting enough for me to want it. The looter spun, which I like. This is like the Anthem Ajani, and I've seen that be okay. It kind of wants you to be in a swarm deck, which I, I guess we're sort of playing. Yeah, I'm kind of torn between Ajani and the Merfolk Looter, and then also the Temple of Epiphany. Like, I usually want that if I'm doing Reanimator, and like, I'm not doing Reanimator. I'll still take it. Uh, Looter's a very strong card, but if we end up being a, a more aggressive deck, I may regret that. Uh, Mirror Entity is a fine card. Time Warp does a lot if you have a bunch of Planeswalkers, which we don't. Um, I'm not going to pass up another piece of fixing, though. It, it looks like we're doing blue-white something. I guess... <laughs> oh, that is, that is a dream. That is a dream. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana? Nah. If you've got bad mana in cube, it's your own fault, so don't have bad mana in cube. This ain't exactly perfect. Um, depending on how aggressive we get, though, we might play it. I know I've been saying over and over again, depending on how aggressive we get, but I think it's it's reasonable. I'll take Linvala. Okay, I don't have a lot of room in the six drop slot, but we got enough room for her. And there's an angel. Like, we could actually open an opposition and be pretty happy about it. And a Whirler Rogue. I might even play that. We've got basically a blue-white tokens deck here. So all of a sudden, Anthems are starting to look very interesting. I think we would be quite interested in Anthems. There's basically two cards here that I'm looking at, and then a third that we'll, we'll mention. But the things that I'm instantly interested in are Mother of Runes, as it's, it's very good at protecting small creatures. Celestial Colonnade, uh, Man Lands, or Person Lands, I suppose, these days. Are, are just fantastic. And again, mana fixing's great. And I, I love, I mean, Worm Coil Engine just, it slices, it dices, it does all the things. Days is even reasonable. I, I'm going to end up taking the Colonnade because again, th there's so many playable cards in cube. I just feel like it's my own fault if I don't have good mana for whatever I'm doing. And having the utility of turning a land into a creature late game does, does do something. <laughs> Like, I'll take whatever six drops end up wheeling if that's what we're going to play. Because it looks like we want to be a little aggressive. All right. So I don't have anything to trigger this yet. But it certainly fits with what I want to be doing. Hmm. Like, I mean, I guess it does trigger on Legacies of Lore, and it does trigger on Banishing Light, and it does trigger on the... Sure, okay. I need to take some non-creatures, but I can get behind this. Basically what I want now is a Planeswalker that has an Anthem effect, or an Opposition. That would be a good thing to do with a bunch of tokens. That would be an absurd thing to do with a bunch of tokens, and we might even will gather the Townsfolk if I want to go completely nuts, and I might. Um, this card is so busted if you can get slightly ahead of your opponent, that it's almost just not fun to play with, whether you're winning or losing. But it's certainly very powerful, and I do like to win, so I'm going to take it. But my goodness. My goodness. Declaration in Stone plays well with the Mentor. 
but I kind of want the Hidden Dragon Slayer for the, the Mono Red matchup. Like, I'm a little bit terrified of Mono Red. There, also, Spell Queller, that's, that's not insignificant. But having something that I can play on turn two versus Mono Red, or I can play, you know, turn three and then into four, I, I think the versatility here and the fact that it works with opposition is, probably means this is what I want. I, I essentially don't have any removal. But Declaration in Stone isn't the removal I want. I want Swords to Plowshares. I've got Legacy to Lure and Control Magic, right? I'm going to put this as a two drop because it probably is against the, the burn deck. Spectral Procession is going to play nicely with the exactly the opposition. I need to get some Anthems for it to really work. But I mean, I'm not playing a Pester Might. I'm not splashing Rouse Eric, so I, I, I guess it's in. Council's Judgment, that's that's a removal spell I could take. It's very good, also. Uh, Martial Coup is interesting, because we, we would want the tokens. I'm really interested in like some Anthem-style effects now. I would be also very interested in Impulse, as it would help us find the opposition. I wouldn't mind some card draw. Like, all we've got so far is the Oracle, but I was just saying we don't have enough removal, and here's some removal staring at me. Like, you gonna take it? You gonna take it? Yeah, I'm gonna take it. Good enough to get banned. Is it good enough to play? I don't know. Unexpectedly absent is very close to removal. Reflector Mage is fine. Yeah, I've been complaining about removal. I'll take the unexpectedly unexpectedly absent here. Although I don't think it would have been unreasonable to take the, the other either. Uh, Entreat the Angels is an interesting one. It's good in your deck, not in your hand, but I might just play it. Like, if you can miracle it, it's pretty good. If you can't, you know, you kind of end up with a 5-mana 4-4 four, four flyer, which is fine. It won't take much for me to convince myself to splash uh, 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 Lingering Souls if we see one, so I'm going to take the Temple of Silence. Our Remove Soul is usually playable. Cloudskate's pretty good too. Both are potentially something to do on turn two. I think I prefer the, the Cloudskate as you can turn to it or just draw it later and it instantly has value. Uh, we probably are playing this if I get an Anthem. So I'm going to put it over here for now. I need like one more Anthem. The Spell Queller Wheeling is fantastic. Like the deck's almost done now. And we can look at, at potentially making cuts. I think what I want now uh, more than anything else is some sort of Anthem style effect. Um, so named because of the card Glorious Anthem, all of your creatures get plus one, plus one. But like there's plenty of them that exist. Uh, Gideon... Uh, the Oath of the Gate Watch Gideon minus produces an Anthem effect. That Johnny I didn't take earlier. I, I would certainly be playing that in this deck now. Just anything to leverage the fact that some, some of our cards are making more than one creature. I think that and mana fixing are really the only thing I'm interested in at this point. I've passed an Armageddon, and I think I'm going to pass the Ravages of War too. I don't mind taking Kitchen Finks and just being kind of a little bit hedged uh, for the aggressive matchups. We're not in a position to, to really take advantage of Thing in the Ice. Like, I, I'd almost rather be pre-sideboarded for the burn matchup and then change it if we're in a, a different one. Okay, Johnny isn't quite the Anthem I wanted, but it may just be the Anthem I need. Tally is quite good, too. Uh, Misty Rainforest is interesting because it fetches uh, the Tundra, so it is a duel for us. I, I think I've been talking so much about wanting to make sure that we have a way to get an Anthem effect that I have to take this. It's unique. Like, Glenelendra would be good. I, we could certainly get some value out of a Flicker Wisp. Uh, Talia would be quite good. But I, I think I just need this. I'd really rather have something that pumps a bunch of creatures rather than just one. 
Like if not that, then probably probably the Misty Rainforest for better mana. But I'm, I'm going to take a Johnny, and it probably gets cut if I get another Anthem. Well, there, there's glorious Anthem. And a stacked pack, too. Like, would be very interested in an image and a Banisher Priest. But I've been saying over and over how much we need this. Uh, so we're going to take it. Not quite sure what our cut's going to be yet, but we will figure that out. Might be this Entreat the Angels. That's cute, but may not be what we need. Sower of Temptation is quite good. Uh, Seeker of the Way is another card that's pretty good against the burn deck, but I'm I'm I think I'm kind of hedged there with two Life Linkers, a Kitchen Finks, and Linvala already main decked. There's an argument to take Wrath of God and side it in, but I, I'll find room for a sower. Like at this point, we're probably for sure trimming this. Uh, oftentimes, I'll I'll want to go into on a Splinter Twin deck, but it this is not that world. Unfortunately, uh, we could splash Siligar. Like, I've got a Temple of Silence. Maybe we find some more lands. Uh, like, none of this is really playable for me. I, I guess we can take a Mana Tithe and, and maybe side that in when we're on the, the play if we want it. I don't think I'll want it, but I, I mean, we could. Are we anywhere near enough to playing Thassa? Like, Whirler Rogue does it. Control Magic, Sower... You could have, what, three pips to get her? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, we're basically splashing blue in a, a white aggro deck. I don't think we want Thassa. Although the, the effect is certainly better here, right? Like, this is a deck that can take advantage of things being unblockable and certainly wouldn't mind scrying. If not her, then an oust I'm probably not going to play. I don't think this is good enough, but I'm still going to take it. The unblockability may be relevant. I actually like Student of Warfare quite a bit. I think we can find room for that too. The reason being, it's really good on turn one, and even if you end up drawing it late, it, it gets quite good. Wow, 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 wow. We've got some options here, and I don't quite have time to go through all of them. I think Secure the Waste is probably the pick, although you could make a strong argument for Recruiter of the Guard. Like, it can go find the Dragon Slayer if we need it, the Grandmaster if we need it. I never ended up getting anything to really abuse this with, did I? It's mostly just a 2-2 two -two lifelink. I mean, I guess maybe at 7 mana we could start recurring that. At 6 we could recur that. I guess we could slowly make an army of tokens here. But I think the fact that we've got opposition means I just have to take this. Uh, maybe there's a world in which I want to carefully consider things. I like Karmic Guide a lot, too. But, I mean, I'm not main decking either of these. Maybe I can do that against, like, a Reanimator deck where we just need a big, giant pro-black pro thing. Flicker Wisp is fine. I, I, I may not have room for it. Image I'll make room for. Man, there were just abundance of riches here. And a Seeker of the Way to bring in against Red. Noise. But there's no chance I'm playing a Splinter Twin. I might actually want this Soldier again against Red. Maybe against an exceptionally controlly deck we would be interested in Future Sight. Well, this worked out great. We've got to make some cuts. Like I said, I'm a little bit pre-sideboarded to play against Mono Red and aggressive decks, but I, I kind of like that for two reasons. One, it means against the other control decks, I can have aggressive draws, which I think is fantastic. And it, it means um, against the actual mono red deck, we're just good to go. I really like that. I kind of don't want to cut any of my dudes. <laughs> Spectral Procession's a little bit hard to cast. And I've got Secure the Waste to do that. So let, let's look at everything that makes tokens. A porcelain Legionnaire is probably something I can cut, so we can start there. But let's look at, at the tokens and opposition shenanigans and then see if, if we've got enough that I don't need to mess with that. Like, what just works with it? These cards just play well with it, right? Uh, the Sower of Temptation to a much lesser extent, the Hero of Bladehold if things are going your way, and the Monastery Mentor. 
and secure the wastes, obviously. A Johnny just may not be what I need. I like having a planeswalker in the deck, but and I did take it early, but it was because I was afraid I wasn't gonna see a glorious anthem. And when we got one, I I think we're happy enough that we can let a Johnny go. I'm sorry, a Johnny. It it sort of has the unblockable thing that Thassa has going for it, right? But it, like I'm not really sold on any of that. I guess it does let you have infinite Kenshin Finks. If you can get that going. We still got cuts to make though. Legacy's lore isn't often amazing, but it's it's never really bad. It's it's basically I've got to consider cutting some of these things that I wanted to have. Like something like this, cut those, call it a deck, get going is reasonable, but I, I legitimately do want the deck pre sideboarded for mono red, and then I'll take it out if it's a problem. Uh, which probably means I need to cut something from this four spot. We're a little bit flooded on them. And the, the Whirler Rogue is probably the worst of them. Even though it plays nicely with opposition, it gives us three bodies and has some unblockability shenanigans going for it. I think we're going to have a more white mana than anything else. And, and Procession may just be the last one. Because I'm, I'm going to have more white mana than anything else, but not necessarily turn three. I think I can get behind this. Like, if we're not playing against a, a burn deck, we're probably interested in getting cards, something like these cards in there. Is there anything that I'm blinking with the Flicker Wisp that's, like, amazing? I mean, Cloud Skate's pretty cool. Amiria's pretty cool. The Metamorph could be cool. The Image, probably not so much. I think this is probably where I want to be. I think this is where I want to be. And then again, we'll hedge a little more on white. And again, I understand Kitchen Finks is not fantastic. Uh, but it, I'm scared to death of the burn decks. So give us 7, 8, 9, 10 white, 6, 7, 8, 9 blue. I'm going to hedge one more here. That makes the Legacies Allure a little bit harder to cast. But you see, we've got a string of, of kind of double whites here. And also, I do want to be able to hit our, our white spells early. Like, Legacies Allure kind of sucks not to be able to hit that. But we should still be able to hit the looter early. The image isn't an early play. And Legacies Allure can still do something later. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. This looks like a good deck to me. It's kind of a blue-white aggro deck, which is not something I've, I've seen very often, but let's give it a go. We will see you for round one in just a moment.